Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you for the, the Lord's day. We thank you that we'll gather together. We ask that souls will be saved. We ask that bodies be healed, that families be restored, that forgiveness happens, and that agape rules this day. So, good morning all. We have uh, Kathy in the room, and Richard and me, and uh, morning. we're grateful for, for God's presence here and for his mercy that endureth forever. Now, um, we, we're we in Holy Week here, um, meaning that the triumphant entry has happened, and we're proceeding to the cross, but to the outside world, good morning, good morning, welcome to this but to the outside world, it looks like in every other week in Jesus, like there's been a crowd swell, oh, Hosanna, 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 and Jesus or teaches in the temple. He he, he does he teaches parables. Like it hasn't been a it hasn't been a revolutionary movement that carries him through this week. It's not a crescendo. It's like that was the triumphant entry, and now we have a week, and and yeah. Jesus knows. That the week is, um, good morning, Paul, good morning, Kathy, mm -hmm. that the week is morning. leading to his crucifixion, okay? But but nobody else, like, you would think, okay, where's, it's the day after the ascension, it's two days after, I mean, after the triumphant entry, where's the, where's the uprising, where's the taking over the place? And it's yeah. not happening. So it's like this isolated burst of, Whoa, you're the Messiah, here's, uh, here's our coats, here's our palm trees, here's our, here's our whoa, uh, entering the city on a donkey. Um, and then we find Jesus teaching in the temple. It's well, a, that's it. He, he enters the city in a, on a donkey. You can imagine the end of the triumphal entry, which is the East Gate, roughly in, in, uh, on the Temple Mount. He gets off the donkey and proceeds. After that, he, he weeps. Yeah. It weeps mm -hmm. because he realizes that's the highest crescendo he's ever going to see mm -hmm. on this trip. Yes. This uh, uh, appearance yeah. on the earth. And uh, from now, you know, now we're stepping into Passion Week. And uh, not now, I mean, well, you understand. But, you know, but in Luke 21. Yeah. Yes, Luke 21. So, um, yeah, he realizes it's, uh, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And, and really, we have more information about Passion Week than probably any other no. segment of Christ's life. We have all four Gospels commenting on it and commenting. Half of John is Passion Week. Exactly right. So we think, you know, this is it, it's a um, I mean, historically artistically, you would say you'd have this crescendo and you'd have Lots of stuff happening afterwards, like yay, you know. But, but um, yeah, well, again, they're all living in the expectation of the Messiah being Messiah Ben David, the conquering hero. And yes, the next step is let's get some, let's get the Romans out of here. <laughs> Not so. <laughs> and, and so we find him. We find all courts kinds of. I see the hand, but you can remember your thinking better than mine. We see all kinds of. Um, different teaching moments that happen in these couple days, uh, whether it's two days or four days, but we see we see pockets of things happening. We see reflections of Jesus, but you also see his angst increasing. Yeah. If they're waiting for a conquering Messiah, then they're waiting for the conquering Messiah to, I don't want to say incite, to tell the crowd rise up against the Romans. They yes. were waiting for Jesus to make the first move, and he never did. Right. But That's he what I'm saying. He gets to the end of the triumphal yes. procession, gets off the donkey, goes about, and it goes yeah. about teaching. And, and we, we don't see Jesus in Jerusalem all this week. We see him coming back and forth from some of the some of his followers' houses in some of the, what we would think about as immediate suburbs. But, um, so yeah. there's, there's all kinds of, I mean, you think about 24-hour days and four or five days of 24-hour days, and some of it he spends sleeping. And but we have a huge, we have huge pockets of these over the course, like Rich just said, over the course of the Gospel of John, half of it is in this week, yeah. and then but that's three years of ministry and 30 something years of life. Mm -hmm. um, but why? Why does he do this? Because 
the things that he's going to teach them now, he's hoping stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's, yeah, and it, it, the uh, the truly enormous prophecies point to this week. That's right. Uh, beginning with uh, the um, triumphal entry. Yep. And uh, the uh, truly amazing um, empirical evidence that right. this that this um, this day predicted way back in Daniel's day yeah. came out exactly. And this is a one-time event in history. It had this remarkable uh, prophecy to support it. it. And then, of course, after that, we're talking about the crucifixion being the Lamb of God, and the, and the Jews have been for centuries mm -hmm. uh, celebrating Passover as the as the um, the assuasion of the death angel with the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And this has been going on. For, so there's a there's a pattern there's a pattern prophecy there, mm -hmm. and there's this empirical prophecy to begin the week, and they're both of astounding uh, uh, gravitas, shall we say. I mean, they're just really... And it's pretty amazing... <laughs> Huge. <laughs> Huge. It's pretty amazing that until the 1800s, nobody sat down and did the math. Yeah. Like, you would be thinking, yeah. you would be thinking if you were a scribe and you had all day to think about yeah. the things of, of God and to do the math, you would say, okay, 400 here, 171,000, okay, we got the thing and we got the thing. But there's nobody saying, whoa, he has to come through those gates on this day. Right. There's nobody saying that until 1,800 years later or something like and that. And that's part of why he wept. You were supposed to know this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if anybody was to know it, you guys had the book, you had the, you had the prophecies, you should have been able to figure out. Wow, this was it. This was, and you missed your visitation, and now, okay, we go the hard route. So, so in the beginning of twenty one, we have this widow giving her giving her all to the to the God of Israel, and and how um, how striking that is in contrast to these guys who just did it for show, and then we then we walk, I don't know. Hours later, it has to be hours later, it can't be days later. Mm -hmm. Hours later, here takes us to verse 5. Mm -hmm. Verse 5, yeah, talking about the destruction of the temple and the sign, signs of the end times. Verse 5, Luke 21, NIV for a change. New International Version. Uh, some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones, with gifts dedicated to God. Okay. So, Jesus is on the way to a cross. He's just talked about hypocrisy and about show. And the disciples are like, Jesus, isn't this a wonderful temple? I mean, I mean don't get me wrong. It, it's a, it was a wonderful temple. It's one it of was, the seven wonders of the ancient world. That's right. Arguably the most beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it was actually built by Roman funding. Um, uh, this one is this the yeah that's right the second temple Herod's Herod's money yeah yep. yep. so so here <laughs> Jesus is on the way to a cross <laughs> and they're stopping to admire the building I mean it is just uh, um, it didn't it's never struck me this um, how how glibly the disciples get their vision off what the Lord Jesus is teaching and look at the spectacular mm -hmm. uh, temple. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a beautiful stones, gifts dedicated to God. Mm -hmm. And, and this, is, this is their life hope. This is the, their, this is the temple. Mm -hmm. This is the, the center of religious activity. It's a center of sacrifice. It's a center of social activity. It's a sense of... It's a, it's a, it's a the whole culture, the whole Jewish nation. It's 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 the heart. You cut that out, and it's a, it's an astounding to me that they uh, remained uh, that they maintained a, a Jewish identity after it was gone. That's right. They did for two millennia. It's just incredible. That's right. And never in history, and never again in history will happen. And so, so here we have Jesus going to the cross, and the people talking about how glorious the temple is now. Please, I'd never want you to disrespect churches or, or places that are adorned by God. I don't hmm. don't disrespect that, but that can't become your God. Yeah. Your temple cannot become your God. Right? Yeah. I've been at a 
Go ahead. Um, I was just reading in First Samuel this morning, and the uh, Jewish people had reached a place where they thought, in, instead of asking God whether they should go out into battle or how they should go out into battle, because the Philistines were coming anyway, things were not looking well for them. And so instead of asking God what to do next, they took the Ark of the, God, Ark of the Covenant into battle right. because they were focusing on the item, on the Ark, mm -hmm. rather than the actual presence of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. yes. And they used it as kind of like a talisman. Now, now we have... God's presence in the battle, and they got sorely whipped. Yes. And so, it, it's it's a call for all of us to be really careful. Sure. You know, there's nothing like there's nothing wrong with wearing a shawl. There's um, it does tell us to anoint people with oil. Amen. But those things should you can still pray without a shawl. You can still pray for healing without oil if you don't have it. Yeah. We shouldn't be worshiping, in a sense, these items. Yeah. We should be worshiping God alone. Amen. When, when my cousins got married, my cousin got married, it was, on, it was in L.A., and I made two field trips in L.A. Mm -hmm. I went to the Crystal Cathedral, mm -hmm. and I went to Rick Warren's church. Now, Crystal Cathedral is a glorious building. My mom has never been impressed with a bathroom as much as the woman's room. <laughs> I mean, this is, and mom, you know, mom had an eye for those things, and this is, she came out of the bathroom. This is the most beautiful bathroom I've ever seen in my entire life, and she's been to Rome. She, I mean, it's just, um, and so, but Rick Warren's church looks like a high school auditorium. Mm -hmm. It's got, um, so the woman that is the tour guide at, Crystal Cathedral. Now we're talking 20 years ago and all kinds of things have happened, mm -hmm. but it's it was a glorious building. And she was saying, you see you see this as a ch as a church that's on television, but I see this as an urban church with small groups and all kinds of all kinds of social things happening that you don't see. Yeah. That aren't mm -hmm. part of the And then she told the story of a one of the first days that she was doing tours around the building. And the office building was a, a skyscraper next to the, um, is one of the guys that was cleaning the big windows ziplined down to the, in the middle of her tour group. <laughs> like, you say, there's nothing that distracts you as much as somebody, as a window washer with a thing going zip right into, oh, hi, this is our window washer guy. <laughs> um, so you can get caught up in how the building is, how the, how the externals are, and God wants us to have good-looking buildings. Don't get me wrong. Um, um, yeah, there's a church the, around the corner. The church is the body of Christ. It's the mm -hmm. people that make it up. That's right. Yeah. The rest and, is just trappings. And then you, there's a, there's a church that used to be in town, and their door was falling off, and everybody's like, "Well, let's not spend any money on the building." He said, "You, you got to spend money on the building. If the door is falling off, that's a bad thing for the church." And so you don't want it to be obsessive about it, but you want it to be looking like God's house. Sure. So, so here we have the a day, perhaps, away from the crucifixion, but maybe if you, maybe hours, but not more than that. Mm -hmm. And the guys are talking about the glory of the building sure. and. Um, so Jesus takes them off that earthly vision thingy mm. and takes them to six. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, again, they, you know, they're, 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 uh, they're still, I mean, they just came off the triumphal entry. They saw the biggest mm -hmm. throng of people throwing their clothes before them and waving palms. And they've always and they had it in their mind that this is Messiah ben David. Uh, you know, they're still all caught up in that orientation. That's right. So, even so, you know, it, it, so the gear shift here is really very dramatic. I mean, it's really wham. And, and let me comment on that, too. It, it looks like Jesus fed 5,000 men, maybe 15,000 people. But, but, that's, but that's not as... 
That's a crowd taking in the teachings of the love of the Lord Jesus. This is a crowd that says, Hosanna, this is the king. It's, a, it's an emotionally different mm -hmm. um, aura. I don't know how to do that better. It's an emotionally different thing. Hosanna, rather than people sitting there soaking in the words of Jesus and eventually being fed by him in abundance. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So and now finally we get to six. Okay, verse six. Uh, Jesus said, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Okay. Every one of them, every one of them will be turned on. Okay. So. The so, wailing wall that exists today was all below the base of the temple. It's just a retaining wall. That's, that's the only 1500 part. Is it 1,500 feet? Is the wailing wall 1,500 feet? You know, is it that big? That 1,500 feet? That's how many football fields? Four. No. Um, anyway. Well, I guess for the whole Temple Mount, you might say that. But the part that they pray at is maybe one, not even one football field. Okay. Well, close. So what happens here is a multiple-layered prophecy. Mm. Okay. When the Father looks for heaven and the fa Father is not bound by time and space, he's kind of... He kind of portrays it as if it's all mushed together. That's not because he doesn't care about the details. It's because from, from space, time doesn't have the same... From heaven, time doesn't have the same... Uh, it's not as we know it on Earth. <laughs> thank you. So, so here we are, 33, 38 years later, that not one stone will be upon each other. So, so what, happens, what happens in this... In verse 6, the rest of the chapter goes on to the second coming and to the rapture and stuff, but we're going to talk about verse 6 for a few minutes. Mm. Why? Why? We've talked about it before, but let's do it again. Mm. Why does no... Okay. So the scepter will... Jesus had to come before the temple went down. Because mm -hmm. the scepter shall not depart. Mm -hmm. So every so thirty eight years later, thirty seven, whatever the number is, um, the temple goes down, and there are people still alive that had heard Jesus say this. Mm -hmm. And there's people that are dead, but there's people that are alive. And so why why would the Romans tear down the temple step by step, stone by stone? Uh, well, yeah, this, uh, this, this, we're talking about 70 AD now. There was another attack in 132 AD. 70 AD, uh, they had enough of the Jewish rebellion, and they uh, surrounded uh, the um, temple, and uh, they did not intend to tear down the temple. They did not intend to hurt it, as far as I know, at all. But it was so adorned with gold, and by accident, it caught fire. And the fire was hot enough to melt the gold and cause the gold to run down in between the stones of the temple. And the uh, legions, uh, I, I don't know if anybody gave a command or not. I think they just went crazy. And it, it sounds like, from what, I, from what I've heard and seen uh, other people uh, talk about, it, they just literally dismantled the temple to get to the gold. Right. And that gold wound up being used to pay for the construction of the Colosseum. And the Jews that they captured, Jews were either killed, uh, captured, or, or, or starved to death, or scattered. The Jews that were captured by the Romans were uh, forced into labor to build the Colosseum. So that Jew, when you look at the Colosseum in Rome, you're looking at literally the aftermath of the temple destruction. <laughs> Wow. In 70 AD. And, and, and there's no reason you would tear down a gorgeous building for... Yeah, no. Uh, but, it's one but of the seven wonders of the world. You, you the, don't want that on your resume. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that some of the, some of the soldiers... Good morning, Pam. Some of the soldiers did pretty well financially with the... Uh, sure. With the, with the oozing gold. I mean, with the gold in between. Okay, well, let's take this rock. Okay, you guys take this rock apart. I want the gold. Um, so, you think... So the vision of the disciples is, ah, oh, it's such a beautiful temple. Mm -hmm. And the vision of Jesus is it's going down, not one, 
not one rock on top of each other. And the only way that that would happen is because they were literally fishing for the uh, yeah. for the gold um, yeah. in between. Well, so, yeah. mm -hmm. so, so the Lord Jesus changes their vision. And you have to think, less than a week from now, there's going to be a resurrection. Mm -hmm. And they're going to think about these things that Jesus said here. Now, they haven't yet envisioned the the temple going down because we're 30 years from that. But but how how radical their viewpoint changes from from this triumphant entry week, from this holy week, into next week, which is really the holy week, because he is risen. Mm -hmm. Like this is the week, this is the week where he does this serious teaching. But there's a radical difference on Sunday because he is resurrected. He mm -hmm. is no longer in the grave. And they still haven't figured all this stuff out. You know? um, and really, Pentecost changes everything because the Spirit falls upon them and they're given insights that they've never had before. And, and, and I love that the two, um, two disciples walking with Jesus on the road to Emmaus, Jesus had like, had like <laughs> six hours or four hours of intensive this is what the scripture said. Oh yeah, I, I remember that scripture. Oh, that's what it means. Like enlightening conversations with the Lord Jesus. And you think, so we talked about two verses today, but but we, we're we setting ourselves up for the cross and for the resurrection. And the people's, the people still, it's likely that the woman who anointed his feet for burial was the closest one to actually getting the fact that mm -hmm. when Jesus says he's going to die and rose again, yeah. that he really means this. Yes. It's not, uh, uh, she has, what she has done will be told through the histories because she is preparing my my body for death. Right. And so, so the, 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 the structures are important, but the structures can't become your God. Mm -hmm. the, the outward appearance has value. You, mm -hmm. but it can't become your God. The, mm -hmm. the, the fact that the stones are going to go down, like, what? Mm -hmm. This is the temple. Mm -hmm. This is the, this is the center of life. Yeah. There's no more important building on the entire planet than this building, the temple, yeah. and it's going down. It's unimaginable. Yes. It, it's a big part of the problem. It's simply unthinkable. Yes. And they didn't. <laughs> it's, it's really that war was it, it, like so many wars. I was watching the history of World War One yesterday, and it's amazing how the numbers they World War One by the numbers. It's on YouTube. Just staggering how big that war was, and uh, it, it's just incredible. But the point is that <clears throat> every war is supposed to be over. You know, the people who Think they can get in and get out of it in no time. The war, the Civil War, they really believe was going to be over in two weeks yeah. in this country. Okay, so uh, but once the once the Romans bring down four armies and surround Jerusalem um, it, before it was over, these people were cannibalizing their children. The Jews yeah. actually wound. I mean, it got that it got to that point. Yeah. Starvation was such. Um, it, it was just horrendous. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so you can imagine even to this day uh, there's a pile of rubble just below the top of the Temple Mount uh, at the near the base of the Wailing Wall in the south uh, uh, west corner and um, it, it's believed that some of the, that was part of the original rubble from the buildings that were on the Temple Mount including yeah. the Temple itself they re that is reminded. Remember, this this is all. Um, well, we'll get to it. Good. <laughs> Final comments on five and six, Kat. Final comments. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, well, it's good. Yeah, that's. You know, we have our own idea of how we think things are going to go down, but our ways are not God's ways. That's right. Amen. <laughs> yep. Lord, we thank you for these powerful scriptures. We thank you for these, uh, yeah. for how how radical your life is. 
We thank you that we can walk with the creator of the universe in a daily, close, loving, agape relationship. Wow. That you would go to the cross for my sins and the sins of the world. It is astonishing. Lord, bring blessing this day that we can see, that we can see your good work radiating through us. Amen. In Christ's name. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that that you had your timing for everything. Amen. And your timing is perfect. And I ask, Lord God, that you will help us to trust in your timing instead of our, our timing. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you again for this instruction. That we, um, we pray that uh, you'll add your anointing and your wisdom and... Uh, make it part of our lives that uh, we may have it as the, uh, the great resource that it is to help us live lives that bring glory to you in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Amen and amen.